such a way, more this way, that we can get as much of an even coverage of the tank car as possible. I'm happy with that. That's a perfect rainstorm. This is a giant production, and one of the key things we want to monitor is the temperature of our tank. Behind each one of these windows, we're going to have a thermometer. That thermometer will go to a wire, which will go out there to the tank car, where it will be attached to a thermocouple. Let's hook it up. Cool! In addition to temperature, the second crucial parameter is the internal pressure. This is officially the biggest thing I've ever drilled into. Adam plums the steel wall and inserts a vacuum gauge. We just turned this tank car into an experimental vessel. And it's primed for the first step of the test. The colossal steam cleaner is fired up, and Adam is struggling to take it all in. I'm having one of those moments right now, rabid excitement about what is about to take place. At the same time, it's combined with a complete disbelief about what we've got set up here. I mean, look at this. We've walked down two and a half miles of train track, a mile of road. We've got about 35 guys and one, two, three, four, five, a dozen trucks to support the implosion of that giant 70-foot-long tanker car. This is going to be cool. So this myth starts with the lonely train car that's just delivered its payload, and it's sitting here on the tracks waiting to be cleaned. The cleaning comes in the form of steam. Go ahead and open up the valve and start putting steam in the tank. Valve opening. Piping hot at over 300 degrees, its goal is to remove every last trace of residue from the previous cargo. happening yeah it's already rising unfortunately once the service guys had done their job they closed every hatch and valve on the tank car something they should never have done this is gonna take a while yeah a lot of mass to heat up yeah even more unfortunately it then begins to rain and the completely sealed tank car full of highly expanded steam begins cooling rapidly precipitously dropping the interior pressure and then what happens next is the whole tank car collapses in on itself. Whoa! Now, is that going to happen when we replicate all of those story points? We don't know. That's why we're testing it. But we will be monitoring everything from the safety of our bunker here. Well, we've been heating our tank car now for about three hours, and its temperature has been steadily rising, and it's very close to our small-scale temperature of over 200 degrees. That's great. Any minute now, we're going to call it. I'm going to suit up. I'll cap it, get the heck out of its way, and hopefully we'll watch it crush itself. Here we go. This is it. i got to climb on top of that thing. It's almost 210 degrees. Shut the top manway, then I shut the bottom valve. Adam enters the exclusion zone alone and climbs the boiling hot steel. He has to be fast and careful while he creates a 60-ton pressure vessel. OK, we're sealed up here. I'm climbing down. I'm closing the valve now. Valve is closed. I am de-assing the area. Mission accomplished. It's capped and the countdown to catastrophe begins. That went smoothly. Once I get back in the bunker, it's going to be time to make it rain. Yep, when things cool down, everything is right on track for the mythical implosion. All right, fire department, let's make it rain. Copy, making it rain. Oh, perfect. Coming up. Oh, did you hear that? This tank car tall tale terminates with a titanic test of the team's ingenuity and nerves. Man, that thing's so friggin' big. 